Well, we're back. 12 hours later. 13. 13, yeah. give or take. 13 hours later, we're <laughs> back. Uh, four, four or five days for you guys, maybe a week between videos, but we're back. Uh, Joe's going to try to make some back. I am trying to get us further into the black, trying to get us all into the back yes, next unit as a total. Uh, if you guys have not registered for the new world college poker tournament make sure to check it out uh, links will be in the description below but we're here it's 4 30 p.m they did a little charity tournament action should be good some people may or may not be drunk already so we got a text to run it up so we're coming let's go peace We have a special guest in today's episode, Aaron McAvoy, who is the commentator for TCH's live stream. He does an amazing job, and turns out he's an awesome guy too. He ended up buying the whole table pizza. Uh, he won a lot of money tonight, spoiler alert. He was playing aggressive and really put a lot of pressure, so very fun playing with him, great talking to him as well. Let's get into the hand. I've got 9-10 of hearts in the hijack. I make it 11. Aaron three bets me in the cutoff to $35. I'm gonna give him some action. It's the first hand of the night. I make the call going off to a flop, which is three, four, five, one heart. I check. He makes it $15, and I decide to stick around and make a little loose call on the flop. Going off to a turn card, which is the eight of hearts, pick up the flush draw, and now he bets a hundred into me. Uh, I'm not getting quite the odds to make the call with my draw. He bet a little too big for my blood. I make the fold here. Nice hand, Aaron. First hand for us, we look down at ace jack offsuit in the plus one position and bet $12. Our arch nemesis Prosper in middle position makes the call and so does the cutoff. So we're going to flop three ways out of position, which is ace king eight with two hearts. Pretty solid board, top pair with the back door flush draw. I decide to continue betting here for $20 and just Prosper Donkey makes a call, so we are heads up. The turn is the nine of diamonds. Uh, this isn't too scary of a card. I'm assuming to have the best hand a lot of times here. Uh, however, now this is a very draw heavy board. Uh, there aren't a whole ton of made hands that he's going to have that are going to have me beat. And I assume that Prosper Donkey will be betting all of his draws, even something like Queen Jack that he might have floated light on the flop. I think he's going to be stabbing here with all of those hands if I check to him. So for those reasons, I check with the intention of calling or potentially raising and he bets $45 into me. It's a pretty hefty bet and I feel pretty comfortable where I'm at. I'm happy to call down on the river if nothing changes as well. So I make the call for $45 and we're off to a river which is the four diamonds, pretty much a dud. I check to him and he bets $75. It's kind of a tricky spot because I feel like he'd be betting more than this if he was trying to bluff me off of a weaker ace or a king of some sort or even pocket queens or pocket jacks that I might have. I'd assume he'd be betting a little bit bigger here if he was trying to bluff me off a hand, so this is a kind of tricky spot. Uh, however, for $75, I'm getting a pretty good price with a good hand. He might even be doing this with weaker hands like ace-10. Uh, for those reasons, I make the call. And he flips over king nine offsuit, so he got there on the turn. Uh, luckily, we did check and pot control a little bit, but we still lost a good chunk of our stack to Prosper to start off the night. In this hand, we pick up pocket tins in the low jack. I just topped up for another hundred dollars, so now we're in for five. Under the gun limps to two dollars. I raise to fifteen, and just the under the gun player makes the call. In my notes, I have him labeled as a passive tight player. So knowing that, let's go to a flop, which comes six 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 rainbow. Yeah, a little scary there. He checks to me, I make it $15, and he just calls. Let's go to a turn, which is the three of spades. My pocket tins still look really good on this board. He checks to me, and I bet $25 for value, and now he re-raises me to 95 So, I'm um, not exactly sure what to do. I'm a little scared because I have him labeled as a passive player, but he could be doing this with sevens, eights, nines for protection. Maybe pocket fours as well. I think maybe he would just call with fours. So for the reasons why I don't want to fold to a worse hand that could be doing this for value, I make a call. And we are in position, so that makes me feel a little better. The river is a five of hearts. Now he checks to me, so that's that's good news. I make an easy check back, no need to try to bluff here. And he actually shows us pocket queens and we lose, so 
Um, he limped Pocket Queens and just called $15. A little tricky from him, and the tricky limp gets us in trouble. Off to the next hand, already down 0 for 2. Next hand for me, we look down at ace four clubs in the hijack. There's a button straddle on, and the middle position player limps to $4. I decided to take the aggressive route here and bet $25, hoping to take down this pot uncontested, which would be pretty nice. Um, however, the small blind has some news when it folds to him. He rips his whole stack in there, $83 total in the pot. Um, and the big blind wants to get in on the action as well. He was also short stacked. He calls all in for $75, a bit less than what the small blind had. Uh, folds around to me, and I have to decide whether I want to gamble here or not. You know, I do like a good gamble from time to time, as long as it's reasonable in my opinion. Um, the total pot is $191, and we only have to call $58 more to see a flop three ways and potentially scoop a huge pot. For those reasons, let's gamble. I toss it in. It'll be good for the vlog. Let's hit an ace, hopefully. I bet my aces are live if I hit it. Uh, the board comes 7 of spades, 10 of spades, jack of diamonds. Come on, turn the river, let's bink something. Seven of clubs and six of clubs. So we hit nothing and the small blind player flips over kings. Big blind player mucks and I muck as well. Uh, looking back retrospectively, against kings, I've definitely got the right odds to call getting such a good price. So I was happy with my call, though it didn't hit. Uh, too bad and we'll move on to the next one. The poker gods sensed that we needed a little help, so they gave us pocket aces in the big blind. The cutoff makes it $15, who's actually Tiny, one of our favorite players at the hideaway, and has been a fan of the vlog for a long time, so shout out Tiny. Small blind calls as well for $15. I make a 3-bet here to $60, and Tiny gets sticky, and he makes the call here. So going off to a flop after the small blind folds, heads up which comes 10 jack 9 to clubs so not the best board for aces pretty scary i actually decide to check here and thankfully tiny checks back going off to a turn which is the six of spades we don't have either a spade or a club i decide to check and with the intentions of just check calling uh, and tiny checks back so going off to the three of hearts on the river i now want to bet small for value and i make it forty dollars to play hoping to get called by maybe pocket queens pocket kings ace jack one of those holdings and he does call uh, we flip over pocket aces and we are good so finally we get one to go our way going off to the next hand you thought one hand against Prosper was enough? I disagree. We got king-queen offsuit in the hijack. Button straddle's on, and I bet $15 when it folds to me. Prosper Donkey was in the button straddle, and he's the only one that makes a call, so we're heads up out of position again. Uh, the flop comes queen-10-7 with two diamonds. Pretty good board to continue betting for value. I bet $20, and he makes a quick call, as expected. Uh, turn is the eight of diamonds. Not a great card, brings in some more draws, but I definitely expect to have the best hand here a lot of times. I think he's going to be raising with flush draws on that flop. He's a pretty aggressive player. For that reason, I continue betting for value. I bet $50, and he makes a call. The river is a pretty ugly one. It is the fourth diamond, the five of diamonds. Unfortunate card. Uh, any diamond now has us beat. Uh, more two pair and straight combinations as well get there. Uh, pretty bad card. I decide to check and he checks it back to me. And to my surprise, we're still good. A nice little pot to help bring up our session. And let's keep that hustler going. Not one rotation later, we look down at Ace King Offsuit, another premium as Tiny raises yet again, this time in early position. He makes it $16 to play. I want a three bed in the small blind to a pretty big size. I make it $55 to play. Tiny wants none of it. He jams all in for $195. Um, I don't think he's gonna be trying to bluff me here, but I have a very strong hand capable of calling all in So that's what I do. I make the call here after not much deliberation Me and him agreed to run it twice So not knowing his hand the first board comes out king high king seven five The turn is the jack of diamonds and we hold no diamonds unfortunately Three of clubs so going off to the second board which we may or may not have that one five jack nine Nine on the turn, four on the river, so ace high is probably no good. 
Tiny flips over pocket jacks to crush our souls. He takes down both boards, scoops this pot, and the proffer we want in Ace's hand is wiped away. Time to add back on. Next hand for us, this one's fun. Sixes on the button, two red ones. Under the gun limps in middle position decides to bet $20. We're pretty deep. I make the call on the button and the big blind under the gun call as well. Flop four ways was 10 jack six. We binked bottom set. Uh, two hearts on this board. Lots of value to be had on such a draw heavy and juicy board. Checks to middle position and he bets $60. I decided this is a great spot to raise, however I don't want to raise too big, I don't want him to hero fold over pairs, and I also want to keep all his top pair or two pair holdings in. Um, I raised to $140, and Under the Gun has some weird weird news for us, he makes a call for $140. Not exactly sure what's going on there, I'm expecting him to pretty much have only strong draws and hands like two pairs, I think he's going to be raising with tens or jacks. Um, middle position quickly folds. He seems to be pretty shocked by this as well. So we're going off to a turn, still in position. I'm feeling very good about my hand when it comes to the seven of clubs. Pretty good card. The only draw that gets there is eight, nine. I don't think this guy's the type of player to call eight, nine out of position when I raise to $140, unless he had eight, nine hearts. That's about the only combination that would make sense. When he checks me, I feel pretty good about my hand. I really want to make sure I charge him if he does have some sort of combo draw, and I can definitely get max value from him. Or if he has some sort of two-pair hand, I'm assuming him to just snap call me. I jam for $400 total, and he goes into the tank. He thinks about it for a while, tries to pull up some table talk, and eventually flips his hand over. He shows me king nine of hearts, so he has a gutter as well as... Actually, no. He's double gutted now. He has the eight or the queen to give him a straight. So he has plenty of outs there as well as a flush draw. So he has all the outs in the world. A really good combo draw here. And he goes into the tank. After thinking about it for quite some time, I'm praying for a fold to be honest. I would prefer to take this pot in uncontested. Um, he goes into the tank and makes the fold. That was pretty shocking to me. He does ask the dealer though to see the river. The river comes the queen of clubs, so he would have gotten there with a the straight. Thank God we were able to get him the fold. I think that was the right move to jam. Pretty happy he folded retrospectively, however, I was probably favorited uh, going into the river, so whatever. We move on to the next one and scoop in a big pot, avoided a potential huge loss. We're back fighting against Aaron. It's late in the night and he has well over $1,000 in his stack. He's been opening a very wide range. When I look down at Ace Queen offsuit in the cutoff, the action goes under the gun limp. Now Aaron raises in the hijack to 12. The low jack calls and because he's been raising pretty light, I want to isolate him in position. I make it $60 to play and just Aaron in the hijack makes the call. Going off to a flop, which is 8, 9, 3, 2 clubs. He checks to me and I decided to rep this board. I think he can be calling very light pre-flop. I make it $50 to play and Aaron makes the call. Going off to a turn, which is the 7 of clubs. He checks to me and this card is just not great for my 3 betting range. I decided to check back. I'm not going to bluff this card. The river is the 2 of hearts. Now he bets small, he makes it $30, not even giving me the chance to bluff, which you know I probably wouldn't have done this bad river card. We brick out and we just make the fold here. Aaron shows us pocket tens and he wins the last hand that he plays of the night. Not gonna be my last hand of the night, not even close. We are going to a part two. Yeah, make sure to leave a like on this one to get that video edited and posted ASAP. The night is not over. I am still playing well, just not getting the cards exactly to fall my way. My luck might change though. You know, I didn't get to make it out to the bars this weekend to see the ladies, but that's okay. We got plenty of them in the card room. We looked down at middle position on the button straddle active, so I bet $25 in the cutoff and the button make the call. So we're off to a flop three ways out of position. It comes 10, 5, 8, two diamonds. Pretty good board to continue betting on here. Not too scared of much. I bet $50 and the cutoff makes a call. Uh, the turn, heads up now, is the six of diamonds. Brings in the backdoor flush draw, as well as nine, seven gets there, but not really expecting to have a whole lot of that. 
I check to him for some pot control, assuming that he's going to be value betting um, some worse hands here like a 10 or potentially pocket jacks or pocket nines. Uh, I check and he bets $90. I think he can be doing this with plenty of draws too. Uh, I make the call for $90 and the river is a pretty, pretty bad one. It's the 10 of diamonds, the fourth diamond out there when we have none. And it also makes it very likely that he could have trips now. Uh, which would also beat us. Unfortunate card overall. Uh, I decide to just check here, planning on folding to majority of river bets. I'm uh, not exactly sure if I can find a call here. However, I don't get to make that decision. He checks back. I figure I might have the best hand here again with queens. I flip it over and somehow miraculously we are good. We managed to scoop in another large pot uh, with a pretty weak holding by the river. So awesome way to end the middle of our session. Check out uh, our next part for this because we get into some crazy pots. Stacks get big. We are running some deep 1-2 Texas poker. Uh, check it out and be ready for part two.